Hello everyone. Welcome to Whip Finish Wednesday. It is time to shine and we got Misha over here saying hello to everyone. So, oh, come here. Maybe, 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 maybe. Oh, there she is. Now you get to be on here with us. She's been really sad that she hasn't gotten on the, on the YouTube in, uh, in a while and she wanted to say hello to everyone. She's been relegated to being outside. What's up, Bill? Hey, Joe. Hello, hello. And everyone on Instagram, hey. So we got a busy night, don't we? Yes, we do. We got a fun night tonight. We're going to tie a ginormous one-aught roamer. It's designed by Jake Vilwalk, a smallmouth master. But we are, um, we're headed to South Carolina next week, and uh, we're going to be on the... Um, on the coast. So I was trying to figure out some more stuff to throw uh, to add to our saltwater box. And I remember reading Jake's book and uh, looking at some of his flies and some of them can be transferred over to, uh, what's up Trent and Steve and Nan. What's up Nan, Chris, Joe, Chris yes, and Mike, yes. and Jeff Rowley. Um, but uh, a lot of his flies can be, can be also used as uh, saltwater flies. So we're um, we're tying his roamer. It's a really cool fly. Uh, it does have step-by-step -step instructions on how to tie it in here, as well as uh, this is a, a Cohen edition in here, but a lot of similarities. Uh, hey, Gary. Hey, Joel. And Josh. Nice to see you guys. So, um, in the vices, the one we posted today, we've got a few different uh, variations here. We've got a purple, purple and black that we tied that uh, in the salt water, purple mm -hmm. and black works really well. One mm -hmm. of Katie's favorite colors. I wish you could see Misha. Katie's going to do the drawing for the Smitty Supply Box, and it has a, she knows not to get into my stuff for the most part back here, but there's that piece of elk hair uh, hide in the box, and she keeps putting her nose in the Smitty Supply Box. Um, so there might be some dog hairs in there too you can tie with. Hey Ryan, uh, what's up Sparkle, uh, and Michael, and Joel again. Um, <clears throat> but the bubblegum in white is another uh, another one of my favorites to throw in the, at the beach. But um, the mud minnow is a, uh, is a very popular bait fish there. Uh, so that was kind of what I was going for with, with this pattern. Uh, which is similar to this one here, uh, kind of an olive-ish, uh, tannish on top, the white bottom. The reality is mud minnows, uh, they've got kind of a uh, creamish bottom. There is some chartreuse in the body, um, but it's like an a olive tan color. So um, <clears throat> so that, that's why we want this color combo. Uh, we're going to be going after the, the three main species that are there are going to be speckled trout, specks, which are not trout at all, um, redfish, and believe it not, flounder. We've done a good job uh, the last few times catching a bunch of flounder on the fly. This is not going to be a good flounder fly. Um, it's a plain old clouser. Works really good on, on flounders because they um, they get down deep, they throw them on a single line, and just kind of have them hop on the bottom of the uh, of the canal and the creeks and the ocean and uh, and the the flounder come up and chomp on them. So, but uh, but this is going to be more uh, mid levels so even towards the top. So this is going to be great for redfish and speckled trout. Um, if the specks are around, we'll put this on a sink line and, and probably swing this because we're not fishing the boat. We're just going to be fishing from the uh, uh, from the shore or maybe like a kayak or canoe, which I guess is a boat. But um, that's right, Jeff. Chomp, chomp. So, um, with that said, Katie, do you have some pictures you want to show this evening? Sure, I'd love to. And if you're watching on Instagram, you ought to hop over on YouTube so you can see the pictures that Katie is showing. Um, I would love to show some pictures. Great. Let's just jump right in here. Um, so, this week we had pics or i'm showing you pics of that some of you guys posted on instagram um of the smitty's fly box fly that we tied last week which was a tilt wing and the first 
pick up for viewing is by Josh Riston. And Josh, I think I saw you on here a second ago. So very nice. Thank you for sharing that with us. And we also have AK Slednecks version and Bill's or Grey Ghost. Is that Bill or is that that's Bill for shares? Yeah. Oh, wait, no. Grey Ghost is Ed. Ed. Yeah. Ed's on down here. Okay. That's Bill. This is Catherine. Yes. I don't know if you're on here or not, Catherine. I can't see the other screen, but that was very nice. Um, Jimmy. And Jay Wilson got that one just a few minutes ago. Um, Mike Ragsdales. And this is Ed's slash Grey Ghost. And um, again, that was uh, not this Smitty's fly box, but it was a different Smitty's fly box um, that we opened up last week and tied the tilt wing on. So those were awesome. And I really appreciate um Everybody sharing those with us, they looked great. So way to go. What would you like to do the drawing for the um, the Smoothies Fly Box that we're giving away this week from people who commented or said that they, they would love to have them carried? Sure. And I just pulled that out. And um, so the winner for the drawing, and they're going to win uh, their own Smitty's Fly Box. Um, and this Fly Box is to tie... Is it the it's, tilt? It's the one sitting right in front of you. This okay, so this is a fly box for the tilt wing. Yeah, you get to go to the mailbox tomorrow and put this in the mail to whoever wins. And the winner came from one of the comments, I think, and the name was Tommy Mirabel. 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 So, Tommy, congratulations. You are um, going to grab one of these um, tilt wing Drake fly boxes from Smitty fly box. We'll send that out to you. So be sure that you hit us up with your, a good mailing address, um, so that you can pick up one of these and, uh, before Misha eats it up because she, she, she was sniffing it a minute ago. And, uh, that's all I got unless you want to go over the giveaway stuff. Oh, that's okay. Joel and Ken, you're absolutely correct. There are some good looking flies, and that's, uh, that's really what this is all about. <clears throat> Whether you love it or not, um, as far as your fly, share the picture. We'll share it. Everyone really likes seeing uh, other people's work and, and how they progress and you know how they 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 do things with different materials. So sharing uh, sharing your work and seeing everyone's work everyone's work is uh, is a lot of fun. So. Um, and if you didn't um, see last week's show where we did Smitty's Fly Box or you've never heard of Smitty's Fly Box, it's a really cool um, like fly of the month box that you get in the mail. And you also get um, sort of like this really nice full color newsletter that talks about how to fish it, whatever the fly is, and how to tie it. and has step-by-step -step instructions on how to put it together. Um, so if you're interested in something like that or... If you're a new tire or if you know somebody who's new to tying, um, it's a pretty cool subscription service where you can get all the materials and um, that you need and you get a different one every month. So it's pretty neat. All right, Chris, you said check my mic. So am I, am I, is Katie just louder than me or am I, um, can you not hear me? Because um, we, can, we can make some adjustments. But while you're answering that, what we're going to do is go ahead and start uh, start tying this fly. Uh, so the hook I'm going to be using is going to be the Arex uh, SA or Salt Minnow 380, 280, sorry. I have my glasses on so I can see the darn numbers. The SA 280, um, and this is in a one off. So we'll put this, uh, this big bad boy. This is a short shank hook. Um, <clears throat> so it's... Um, Normally, um, um, Jake is using more of a long shake hook, shake hook like the Trout Predator, Trout Predator Light, uh, the 605, 610, um, if you, uh, a Partridge Universal Predator, I believe. Uh, it's just kind of your normal shank hook. And this is the one that he suggested that he throws in both salt and fresh water. 
um, but especially for salt and uh, <clears throat> when it's tied right, it's going to have a lot more movement and because the, the body just has less rig rigidity to it, at least how you say it. And look, I got to get my hair out of my face because that will be no bueno. So the Arex SA280 one off is the hook we're going with and thread is going to be the six aught somewhere. Here we go. The six aught classic wax, wax thread and chartreuse. So we'll go ahead and get, get this started on our hook. Um, this is going to be a, a really fun fly for all, for everyone. Uh, because if you're like me, this one is just so different than uh, that, that it's challenging. Uh, but it doesn't re really require a whole bunch of materials. Uh, and the techniques are, are pretty, um, pretty simple. But there are a couple uh, unique things about it. So let's switch over to the, the vice, honey, please. Um, so the first thing I want to tie in is going to be bucktail. And right when I said uh, it's stainless steel. Uh, a st steel fish, I believe it's stainless steel, and it's designed for the salt. I think <laughs> your mic is not as close to you as it has been because we moved it to do uh, something. So that's probably why his mic seems different. We had to move it when we did a, a different video uh, where we were standing up and I had an over the shoulder shot. So I turned the volume up on it a little bit, but we may just have to make do tell the till this one's over and then kind of reset it. But if you guys can hear him okay still, that's all that matters. So let's I just switch down to this bottom, the, the tying desk, honey. So Ken, I think, said nice looking bucktail. Thanks, Ken. So here's the bucktail we're going to be using. And this is the crummiest bucktail that I could find. And I don't mean bad quality. Uh, what I'm looking for are shorter fibers. And this is one thing that Jake talks about is, um, for this particular fly, you don't want uh, really long fibers. So I've got, I'm sure I'm the only one that has a collection of bucktail, um, but like the, this is a this is a really good bucktail right here. This is fabulous and it's got fibers in it that are probably four inches long. This one's even better. I mean, it has fibers in it that are, let's see, five, plus inches long. Um, and then we just got like great regular old regular bucktail that this is really straight. Bucktail is a lot like feathers. Like it's not a one size fits all type thing. Um, it's all about what you're going to be using it for and longer is not always better. So hello Keisha. Um, so a few a few on bucktail when you're using it. Just basic stuff. The bottom part here this part is going to flare a lot more than the tip and it just kind of progresses as you go up to where the tips are not are not going to be as hollow so they're not going to flare as much so the the base of the tail is going to be a lot more hollow and it will flare a lot more um since it's a slat fly why aren't you using a mono thread it's more durable uh i'm using this because this is what um i can't remember what brand that um Jake uses, but he he uses a chartreuse um, regular thread. That's that's why. Um, good question though. Uh, I hate mono thread. Yeah, mono thread something that takes some getting used to for sure. Uh, but basics: flare or not not much flare at the tip, a lot of flare at the, at the bottom. So um, when you, when you're cutting it, you want to take your pinch pinch off. So you can get it so you can see it. Get your pinch. And, and cut it close to as close to the high as you can, just like cutting mo most materials. But see, um, when, when you look at the length here, my entire length of this fly is going to be maybe three and a half inches or so. Let's see, I'm, I'm measure 20 here. Yeah, about three and a half inches. Well, my fibers are uh, three and a half, four inches. So um, that's going to be too long if I, if I use the... Um, the entire length of the, the fiber, so I'm going to shorten them down. So I'm going to do three three pieces, three clumps of deer hair, three, um, or bucktail, sorry. 
one's going to be the first thing to tie in here. And then we'll tie a few more materials in. Then we'll tie another one right, right in front of that. And then I'm going to reverse tie a clump here in the middle. Um, and we want it to have a nice shape to it and go from not much flare at the back to the most amount of flare at the front. Now, if we have too much flare, then we can, I can show you how to kind of tame that down. But we do want it to flare. So my first piece is going to come from more the more the tip of the of the tail. Maybe not the tip tip, but like here. My second piece is going to come from more of this spot right here. And then my last clump is going to come from more the base of the tail. So that's the um, that's kind of my thought process on the bucktail. So with that said, this back piece we're just going to um, uh, use it's more like a rudder. This is not a giant clump of bucktail. When I watch some people tie online, and I could be totally wrong, it, you know, that'd be the first time today, but I could be completely wrong. Um, but this back clump does not need to be big at all. So as you can see right here, I've got my little, my small clump here. I'm gonna cut it off. And I've got my little, little piece here. I don't know how many fibers, but I'm gonna thin this out a little bit as well. So what I do is I take, run my fingers here to about the halfway point. You can see these little pieces that I, I just pulled out. I do just the short ones. And then I'm gonna kind of flake it out. Make sure there's no, because I'm gonna tie it in here and I don't need that bulk of those really short ones there. So let's just see how we're looking. I think that's, that should be pretty darn good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna spin my thread and I want that to go roughly Let's see, it's right about just past this side of this piece here. So my feathers are going to go a little bit past that. So right, yeah, about to there. So when I tie this in, and this actually might be just a shade too much even. So let's pull out a little bit more. I think I just pulled out a total of three fibers. I think of four fibers now that I pulled out. Um, so I'm going to cord up my thread, give it a little more bite, and I'm going to hold this clump on top of my, on top of the hook shank, because I don't, this is not going to spin around the hook shank, this needs to pretty much stay right on top of it, because this is going to be what, um, what I lash a lot of materials to, like my, straight. this would be what I lash my materials to, like feathers, and if I have it if I have the bucktail spinning around the hook shank and have it more rounded, then that's going to give me more of a round surface to tie on, which will make the feathers harder to tie on. Right now, I'm kind of making this part more flat. I have to get up at zero. Thank you, Josh. We appreciate it. Thanks for sending your picture in. And good luck at 0300 tomorrow morning. And uh, hopefully, you can hop on and watch this later on. Crossed. Um, all right, so I'm going to tie this down nice and tight, and we are good. So all I did was just tie a little bucktail in. That to me, that looks a little thick. So if it's thick, or you want to take some out, um, don't just pull it out because this is the the deer hair is in there by compression. So we just wrapped a bunch of thread on there, and we tightened down really really tight. Now, if I just try to pull out some of those hairs, it doesn't, it kind of makes it where it's not as tight anymore. So I got, I, I think that's a little, little, uh, little thick. So as opposed to undoing everything, I'm just going to get in here and just, just cut a few of them out. That looks a little bit better. All right. So like I said, that you don't want this to be super, super thick. So next thing you want to do is a little flash, and I'm going to use the the silver fly. If you got a Silverfly Mirror Flash Mirage White. Now, the reason I like this is because <clears throat> it has a texture to it. It's almost like a lateral scale and it has texture. It's like a two ply material. So it's going to, um, a lot of materials where it's just like a flash of it's just flat. It's, it, it, it works fine. I'm not saying not, don't use flash. You use flash of absolutely. But the reason I'm going with this is because of the texture, it's going to shine different in different angles. Um, Probably not a ginormous deal, but I'm gonna get two fibers. 
and want to take them, line up both ends, bring back together. Make sure I did that right. I did not. Try that again. Get my two fibers again. And bring this forward. Bring this round. So I'm just going to tie this on right on top. And all this is doing is putting the flash right down the top of it. So you can see it right, right there. It's falling down right now, but it's right there on top. And um, the reason Jake says he likes to put the uh, the fibers here in the um, before he's tied everything on is he wants the more the trans the flash to come through like a translucency. And um, that's what we're going for. So we got that done. All right. So now we're to feathers. We always like feathers. Shoot. Feathers roll around. So I've got two uh, two things we're going to do. We're going to use this is the freshwater streamer cape. And this is American saddle. Uh, both are hens. And um, we're going to grab two feathers of each because I'm going to try to um, to have a, a cool and bleed through on the color. It should be good. So when you're pulling them off, just make sure you just have the two feathers. Because if not, then uh, I've been known to pull out extra feathers on accident, and this always seems like a waste. Um, so let's see here. Pull them around, see, so I just kind of work through it, make sure I just have the two. I'm trying to pick two that are, that are very close to the same size. That one looks not cool. Well, I'll give it some cool variation. See how this one's got a little, uh, little speckling there. Character. All right, so I want to just kind of start prepping this. Now, the interesting thing is one thing that, that I'm, kind of saying, I'm not sure if it's because it's a cape or because it's a, uh, looks about right. Um, I'm not sure if it's because it's a cape or because it's the freshwater streamer. But the freshwater streamer since tends to crimp a lot better. And what I mean is right now I'm just stripping this off and lining them up to where they're both the exact same length. And I've got two olives that are the same length. And the same thing with this, with the grizzly. So the um, the rachis or the stem is not perfectly round. It's sure not like super flat and super easy to tie in. They can roll on you. They can be be kind of a bear. So this is a trick that I've done for a while, but I also saw Jake talk about it. So we'll go ahead and go over it. Um, what you want to do to help time in straight is get a pair of. Uh, uh, hemostats or pliers or something and you're going to take the, the stem and right by where the, the the fibers are coming out of the rachis just pinch it. If you see when I'm crimping this my stem right here is not moving. It's not twisting one way or the other so I'm flattening out that that makes it just a lot easier to, uh, um, to tie in with being flat. Now here's a saddle and when I do that, what is the, the end right here? And I crimp it. See how that twisted? And this one actually might be a lot better. Every single one of the other ones, it's kind of twisting. See it twisting the feather there? Um, so like I said, they're not perfectly round. And I'm just trying to break this real good. And I'll pull it off. Um, so because they're they're typically more like oval, yes, they're typically more like oval and the this the fibers are coming out on the sides. 
when you strip it off, uh, that saddle is more like this. So it's more straight up and down. So when I, I'm crimping it, it's moving to one side or the other. And that makes it really difficult, really difficult to tie in um, because I'm trying to tie in the small part of the oval into the on the oak chain. Not too big a deal because I will show you a, a good way to kind of cheat. But that's what I'm doing right now is just, cr just crunching the fibers. So we'll go ahead and get to doing this. Go ahead and get to tying this in. So all I've got right now is bucktail and a little flash. I'm gonna put the olive on the inside. So first wrap is light, then we get kind of um, firmer as we go down. You can see how that basically straight up and down. I have a slight cant to it, that that's good. I'm gonna put the the um, grizzly on top of that. Same thing, kind of loose wrap, somewhat tighter, 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 pretty tight. Look at that. You can see it's looking pretty good and straight. Okay, let's go cut these off. Now, when you get to be really good, just put this lay effectively. Yep. Um, when you get really good, you can tie both of them at the same time. As you can tell, I'm not doing that. So, and, and as far as colors wise, Jake does use two on each side, but let's, let's yeah, see it on that one. Perfect. So you see how the, the grizzly will look with just nothing. So I can put two grizzlies, that's just going to give it some more, um, uh, not oomph, some more, what's the word I'm looking for? Make it stiffer. If I put uh, two on each, in each side. But if I add the grizzly and the olive, especially once it gets wet, See how pretty that looks, that, that olive comes through that grizzly and it, and it just looks really, really, really nice. Um, now if you had a two, one regular grizzly, one grizzly dye olive, that'd be fine too. But um, my point is don't, don't feel like you've got to have the exact perfect color hackle. Just um, use what you got and layer the colors and make it, make it look interesting, make it look unique, make it look However, you're proud of it. So right now I've got the hook, the other feather, and everything pinched in my in my hand. Do a light, heavier, heavier here. Looks pretty good. Now we'll pink back. There we go. It's kind of canting out just a little bit, but like I said, we're gonna fix it in just a sec. I'm gonna put this one in here. Heavier, tighter, tighter. How are we looking? Pretty good. All right. Now, Gary, I can promise you, I'm, well, I hope I don't forget something, but it won't be my first time. All right, so we're gonna kind of get this stuff lined up, making sure it looks good. That looks straight. This looks straight. So it looks looks just fine. And <clears throat> I, some sometimes the feathers just don't cooperate. Um, they're they, they'll just can't. You'll go on and on and on. They'll try to get it to work just right, but you you got one to the other one one way. But regardless, if, even if they do cooperate, I've got some gold thin man here. You can use solar res thin, whatever. Just a really light um, loom flow is, is under. Will be fine, um, but I'm going to put a little bead right here in the middle, right kind of on the on that bucktail. And I'm going to take some and put it on the stem right here, kind of bring it back all the way till it touches, touch that thread. On the other side, do the same thing. Like I say, guys, this is going to be a good fly that will get everyone out of their comfort zone. So now I'm going to let this soak in. We'll kind of pull it tight, make sure it's really good, and I'm going to get my fingers in the resin, but I do want to make sure that it's, the feathers are somewhat aligned the way I want. But right now, we're, what we're doing is we're stiffening it up 
the um, our tail section, just a little bit of it, and get it straight the way you want it. I don't worry about that one little glob. Hit it with the light. And there we go. So if the, the feather wasn't perfectly straight, like I said, we did a pretty good job on that. So I'm not, I didn't do that because my feathers, feathers weren't straight. But if my feathers weren't straight, that's a good way to straighten them up. Um, but a little bit of bulk. It's more for the rigid, rigidity, Mike. It's more to, to keep it. Um, <clears throat> we're we're going to build a taper all the way down to the, the tip. And uh, it's more for the rigidity, but it's also for it to, to really finalize a little bit of taper. So we don't want a big chunk of bucktail in the back. But speaking of bucktail, we are going to put some more on right now. Oh, I'm going to forget your thing. So we'll get back here to the bucktail before we uh, we cut the, the section off for the, the tail from here. So now we'll go right here to the middle and we'll pull off. Um, and remember how thin that section was. We're going to go thicker as we move forward because we're going to, the whole thing is on this taper. Sorry, salt is like, salt is <laughs> going to kill me. Sweet. Well, Joe, we're, uh, we love fish and salt, but it's not definitely not our comfort zone. And uh, I don't know if you're asking about the, uh, the mono thread. Mono thread is definitely something that if you've never tied with it, you, you need to like make sure that you've had a really good day. Uh, don't don't start tying with it first day, like unless you've got really good instruction and think it's going to be the same as as regular old thread because it's not. It can be challenging, but um, but once you get used to it, it's fine. It's it's super easy. Okay, so the way I've got my 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 piece of bucktail here. The way I, I want to tie it is, remember my, yeah, you can see my bucktail, the, the tail piece, it's right about where my finger is. So this is how, how long it is. I want this piece to be tied in roughly where my thread is. And I want it to be half to a third, so I want it this long. This is what I was saying about the, the bucktail. All this back here is waste. So there's a lot of bulk back there as well. That's what I'm going to do. This is how you make long bucktail short. This is not the, the best way to do it at all, but I'm going to grab this much of it, relax this hand here, and pull this out, bring this down. We'll do it. That's what I get from watching the TV and doing it at the same time. So now I've got it kind of a little, little bit shorter. Grab just the tips, pull it out. I'm trying to get, trying to just even that up just a little bit. Just tips. Now I'm not throwing these away. I'm putting them back in. Okay. So now we've got. You're shuffling cards. Yeah, it's just like we're shuffling cards. Using it like now, boss. That's feel free. Use it. Use it the way up. It is good stuff, and and it's great with that. Uh, are using super glue to uh, to basically fuse it all together. So um, to the butt ends here, I'm gonna cut roughly here, just just for working purposes. All right, so I've got my clump here. Now it's shorter, and the tips are a little bit thicker. I want it to be remember my tips went to where my fingers are, so I want it out right there. Yeah, about there. So I'm gonna grab all this and go one, two, three. And then I'm gonna use my finger and kind of help it spin. So spin around back and forth, and spinny, spinny. And just kind of turn it around and look and see where it's not spun. And just kind of work with it until you get it just the way you want it. And here's where I'm gonna twist up my thread because I want to have as much bite as I can. and you just do not break your thread. Because <laughs> I, I, I won't be surprised if I break it at least once tonight, but hey, it wouldn't be a Wednesday night live unless I didn't break the thread. So if you can see, 
I've got a little bit more, a uh, little more flare on that one. See how that one flared out more than the tail? That's perfect. That's exactly as far as length. We went length from here. Now a second stack is, is this long. So this stack is shorter. It's not thick. Remember, we're not trying to build a lot of bulk with this. We're, um, we're trying to build this silhouette. Uh, if you put too much material, and this isn't officially a hollow fly, I know. So I'm going to pull this down. Although you will get to see me reverse tie the next one, the next clump, and you'll just probably laugh at me and be like, oh, you're such a noob. Such a noob. I thought this guy would know what he was doing, but he is entertaining because, yeah, entertaining for sure. All right, so now I'm going to probably work my thread back just a little bit. I don't want to waste with it. This being a short shank hook, I don't want to waste a lot of this real estate. So I'm just kind of working back to where that feather is. Not all the way where the feather is, but see, I'm not losing the length. I'm just gaining a hook shank. There, that should be fine. So there we go, all the way around. You can see the, the taper, and we're good. So we're going to do this one just straight olive. The uh, the other one I mix olive and uh, scalping olive. The new banging out flat. That's right, Gary. We're banging them out. Good grief. Um, so for the mud minute, I was I was mixing scalping olive and olive because um, I felt like it just gave a better, more natural color for for salt. But since this one will be given away. I think all of them be a little more, and really, I don't think it's going to matter. I don't think it's going to matter one bit whether it's got a hint of sculpting olive, whether it's got a hint of this, or that. You throw it in front of a fish's face and, and it gets their attention, they're not going to be like, dude, that is a wrong, I'm like, who do you think you're fooling? That is a wrong color olive. I'm not buying that. No, well, I'm glad you at least say it behind my back. <laughs> well, anyway. Um, all right, so now I've got my little little piece of uh, laser dub and all of so I'm gonna grab this and we'll just card this. So what I mean, I just pulled a piece out here, grab this and just pull it apart. Make sure you put that stack right back where it was. So I'm just aligning the fibers. And as you move your fingers closer together, that'll be harder to pull. We're not breaking the fibers. We're just getting them to where they're getting to be more all one length. Just kind of spin them together. Get them all one length. Is that right? No, no, not one length. We're gonna get them all in one aligned in one stack. So when I grab one tip, pull, it doesn't pull out. You switch it around. This side will probably pull out a little bit. Now we're good. So I've been using uh, laser dive for a while. Not, I'm not like like I've said, I'm not a pro. But from my experience, the first time I use this stuff, I use way too much. You think you're trying to build bulk with with um, with the uh, laser dub, and I'm and I put just entirely too much. The the least amount, let's say the least amount. You want it to have color. You want it to to create a little bit of silhouette. But um, <clears throat> I can just about tell you that if you haven't used it the first time you use it, use less than you think you need. I just want to put in that piece right there, and uh, you'll probably turn out fine. So I'm going to bring my thread back to about there. I'm going to take my laser dub. I'm going to take it like this and we'll fold it over. That makes sure that, in this case, that the tips can be, I might make it a little longer. So what is that? 70% 70, 70 on this side, 30% on that side, maybe 60, 40. All doing it in a different manner like that does. Make sure it's right on top of the hook chain. You see, I've got that just sticking straight up. All that, um, and the light makes it look like that's a lot bigger chunk. That was my problem. I was watching people do it, and I'm like, well, I'll sit there putting a lot on there, but when I did it, it's like, holy joke, that's- It's that's troll great. hair. Troll hair, that's right. Looks like troll hair. There we go. Nice and bound down. Looks good. I'll 
totally. I lost my train of thought as I was talking. You were thinking about troll hair. Yeah, I was. There we go. So that it's brushed out. Nice little color there. Summary, don't use too much of this stuff. And Gary, don't think male troll hair or female. That's, that's a candy question. I, I never could tell the difference very well. They all kind of look the same to me, except for the hair color. <laughs> the thickness of it, maybe. 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 This one definitely feels female because it's, you can tell it's been conditioner, conditioner yeah, a it's, lot. It's a male that kind of smells bad and it's got a weird texture to it. Kind of feels a little dirty. Yeah. I, mean, I really feel like I'm forgetting something, but um, we'll just keep going. So next thing we use is the, the EV Polish Chanel. Pearl. No legs. No legs yet. Trolls are neutral. <laughs> I think yeah. they are neutral. Let's just go with that. That's that's a good. Right, we'll go with that and we'll leave it there. So I'm just tying this in up top. Bring this down. Now I'm not too worried about getting super tight wraps, but also because it is short shank, I'm not trying to leave them open. However, I will do a little bit of a thread base here because I do have the chartreuse and it was Jeff Atlantic that showed me when we were at the beach pitching the guy in Polly's Island and uh, works in Montana now. Um, he showed me all this shrimp and, and when I started looking for it, it's amazing how much you actually see chartreuse in the uh, um, in the bait fish, they've got chartreuse in them, and or you see uh, in shrimp, especially there, there's chartreuse and shrimp. So it was it was really interesting seeing chartreuse, quote unquote, in the wild. We'll put a half inch, a half inch. I'm hoping my screen catches up because I can't see anything. But let me know if y'all can you show what that material was you just tied in, Randy. This is the. Caroline EV Polar Chanel and EV Pearl. Pearl. That right there. And you can use different colors. This is just um, what we're using for this one. You use whatever, whatever gets you excited. How about that? How about what? Oh, baby. Well, that is. That's, it's that's neutral. Something. That is a neutral one. I, yeah, I think that's pretty neutral looking to me. So, Kelly Gallup trick when you're tying this. That's the material we just tied in, by the way, that troll. Yeah. This stuff right here. Yeah. Um, make sure you're pulling this tight. So, like, grab the hook, pull it really tight. Now, and you see, I'm not too worried about catching a whole lot of fiber or catching fiber. I'll, I'll strike it back. I'll do a turn, pull it back, pull tight. Pull back, pull tight. You can see that the wraps are touching, but you should go see, yeah, you see this gaps right there, and that's where that chartreuse is coming through. That's fine. I mean, don't don't get too don't get too worked up on it. You can say, well, that's why I use chartreuse thread, so it'll help. And yeah. on the longer shank flies, I think it does matter. So if you're using the uh, six to five or six ten or a different stop, a different hook. Um, and I think you've got a little bit of room to play with and leave part of the um, um, you can leave part of the the shank exposed and have more open open spiral wraps. But um, anyway. yeah. So let's do one more stack of deer hair. Like I said, bucktail. Um, this is going to be more hollow down here. This is a really good example of this fly, especially because you can see how the two stacks I just did um, uh, flare more. So I'm gonna get this one a lot more from the base. And I'm gonna, this will be my thickest stack or thickest clump, but it's still not gonna be very thick. Let's see if I can find a good, good spot to grab it from. I'll grab it from this side. So I'm just grab a pinch, use my scissors, stick, it, stick them in there, pull it out. Kind of, just right, pull up tight, and I'm just bumbling around through this. And 
Hey, Gary, do you know a good place to get short bucktail? Hmm. This is a loaded question. Is this, I was going to say, is this like a trick question? Is this a, a riddle? Let's, let, let's, uh, hypothetically, I placed an order today for it. Uh, it's been really rare um, that, uh, that I've called someone and asked them for bad bucktail. I'm like, I don't want bad bucktail, I want short bucktail. This is, this piece right here, I would say is three and a half inches. I'm like, I want two to two and a half inch bucktail. Are you saying short piece. is bad? Well, normally when you're like looking around, you pay extra for the really long stuff. When you're doing a beast fly, you're dealing with it. it oh, we're just talking about bucktail though. Bucktail. Okay. Honey, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> Gary, um, Gary said yes. Okay, he so, does. So Gary, Gary said yes. So I wanted some short stuff. And um, and I ordered some. And Gary, it might have a supplier that you can get short bucktail from, possibly. Just saying. So this is, I've got a pretty good size clump. These are just kind of really long, spindly ones there. So I'm going to grab those, pull them out. And um, I've got a good little, little start there. If you want to, I'm sitting at home, you can go like this over your trash can. Just making sure that this is the, the part for me that's the, it's a bit tricky. All right, we'll call that good. So if you're interested in getting short buck tail, let us know. And uh, we might go pass on, because I don't know where, shoot them with a little. That's right, Bambies. Um, okay. So I'm going to tie these in backwards, or I'm going to do, this, do a reverse tie on this. So that means, I swear I'm forgetting something. I've got to be forgetting something. Oh, well. <clears throat> um, so my tips, right here my finger is, is where my tips for the, the last bunch was. So I want this to go to about here. So I want shorter. So I just kind of work there, or where I want it. And um, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to use my use my thumb right here where I'm holding it as the, the measurement and hook it push it to the hook guy. Now I'm going to have the butt ends here, so I'm going to, I'm trying to explain how I'm measuring this. I'm going to lose some of my length by the fold over, so I want it to be just a little bit shorter than those tips. See how this is a little bit shorter because by the time I lose my folding fold over and stuff, it's going to be more like that. Which is what I want. That kind of makes sense. Yeah. I hope so. So I will call that good. So I'm gonna take my, my little clump here, cut it off, three, cut it off, bring it up there. Cutting with my left hand and scissors still cuts pretty far good. Do you have to cut with your left hand because you're tying it in backwards, breathing backwards? Something like that. Should you close? Probably. Cut my thread. I, Gary I says it's petite. petite. Tail. Katie, not sure. It's petite. I know. I gave him the petite. okay. I gave him the okay emoji. <laughs> All right. So, got my, my thread corded up. I'm going to put one, two, three. And then we'll do the same thing I did before. And you see how my butt ends are right there? I could probably shorten this out. And this is where I would start messing with it too much. I started like losing the battle. But uh, I'm just gonna leave, leave that alone. That's that's fine. So right now, you see I see the hook shank's kind of bare. It's fine a little bit there, but it's um as I turn it, it's spending more, and that's actually looking pretty good. So we'll see how we're looking all the way around. Pretty close, but just grab your fingers. This is where, like, once you get three wraps on there and you're holding it somewhat tight, grab it and just work with it. That's fine. Now we'll start tightening up on it. One, put a little bit of a band of thread going back. You have to encourage it. I'm totally encouraging the heck out of this thing to do what I want. I think I lost so much of my bulk just right there, but. Hopefully I've got enough on there. So I've got a good, um, good little fan. 
So I want to make sure it's even. If it's not even, if I've got like some really heavy spots or thick spots or thin spots, uh, that's where the um, that'll change the way the, the fly is going to swim. Because I want to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'm stripping or when I pause, I want to go back. If I've got too much material on one side, it's always going to go to that side or the other side or, you know, that's, that's that. And, hey, I found a whip finisher. All right, found my fancy tool. You can use a straw, you can use a pen. This is some sort of a marker that I used a long time, I found a long time ago. The reason I like this one is because it's got two different sizes. We have the two, we got smaller size, bigger size. Like it, it's got two different, like it came that way on purpose. Yeah, like where I unscrewed the marker part out and it was like that. So, yep. That's fancy. Anyone make fun of me? I don't know. Can you have to tell me some of the comments because I can't see anything? Um, so now I'm going to grab my, my marker here, tube. I'm going to push this over like this, bring it back. I'm just going to work my fingers to get it just right. So you can see I've got the, about just a little bit of hook shank or bare hook shank there. I'm going to take my thread and go straight up, straight down. Straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down. Pull it kind of tight. Now I've got that part done. Now I'm going to spin this because I want to build a little bit of collar. What I'm trying to do is build a little bit of a tying point here. And that tying point is going to be where I want to tie four clumps of materials, but really three separate materials. So I've got my thread corded up. I'm just going to bring this. I'm working my thread backwards. See how it's building up more of that taper? And that was not a very big clump of, of bucktail, and a lot of it fell out too. So I'm gonna grab the hook, pull on it. Something must be going wrong, Gary, because I, I still have I've been trying. I haven't broken my thread yet. I've been trying. Okay, so you can see the length of the length here, and here's the length of my let's show you here. Link here versus link here. So they're not the same length and folds in and, and is going to help help with that taper there. I think your comments are back up now. Okay. Precision machine. And so well the front part of it, I want to call them. Joe, you can tell tell me, tell us, learn us the front part of it is. If he wants your opinion, he'll give it to you. Are you talking about Joe? Is yeah. Joe wants my opinion? Yeah. Well, there you go. You can tell tell me my opinion, Joe. All right. So I'm just trimming it up a little bit. All right. So we got the uh, the, the front clump tied in. I think Joe is going to school everyone on this one. Um, he's gonna, we might have four or five different variations from Joe on this one. This he's one. legit. And we cannot wait. We cannot have a few hairs. They're driving gear. I, that's why I tried to hit him beforehand because I was just on trim him out. I figured he was like going nuts. Um, but that's actually looking pretty good so far. All right, so we're going to tie uh, fins. We're going to tie a throat and we'll put a little flash on it. So we'll do the throat first. I'm going to use the same crimp of red. You can use crystal flash, you can use whatever. But red, you want to just like straight up red. Um, don't make them too long though. So I've got two, two fibers. Oh, it tastes, mm, oh, it's like big, red. no, it's big red flavored. Listen, did you hear Katie? She's like, oh, no, oh. it's, it's center fly stuff. It's okay. It tastes like big red. Yep. Got him. <laughs> Mike, you're taking them on. All right. So I've got uh, two fibers folded over, four fibers. I'm gonna bring it back around. And we'll have. Ugh. And so I've got a piece here that's gonna be too long. So normally this over the, the trash can. I'm just gonna even everything up really nice. Have it, have it be. This is. So I like about having this ruler here. I can rush and measure stuff. An inch and a half. So we three quarters of an inch. I know rulers are pretty cool, aren't they? It's amazing they, they, how they, they work they, like that. It's amazing. You can measure stuff. It's crazy. 
So, you don't have to use your phone or anything. Crazy. Crazy. All right. So, sure, I've got that. That's still not perfect. So, I'm going to take my scissors again and just even them up. As you can tell, it's really scientific. Once again, left hand scissor work with flash. I can't wait to see Joe's on this. No way to go to you guys. I want to see yours. It's going to be awesome. I'm totally just giving you a hard time. Um, all right, so we've got our, our clump tied in at the bottom. We want to get a couple wraps on top of that to make sure that's nice and in locked down. So there's our, our uh, throat. Take your fingernail and just kind of work it around to where it spreads out a little bit, but it's not really meant to be much more than that. I don't like it to be spread out a little bit more. But, so that looks pretty good like that. Right on the bottom. So the next thing we'll do is I'm going to put a little flash up top. And in this, we're going to use ripple ice fiber. It's all autoclave prior to shipment. What are we talking about? Autoclave. Totally lost my train of thought. Steve, I'm sorry. Um, so I've got, so I'm going to count those. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight fibers or so. And uh, these are pretty good length. They could be definitely be longer, but I'm going to tie them in. Roughly about oh. here. Oh, is that Misha? Yeah. Trust me, uh, there is that was that was not Katie. No. Misha just came in here and like belched right in her lap. A couple wraps, bring that back. Let's make sure we don't wrap over that bucktail because we want it to mm. continue to be flared. Continue to be Rick flared. <laughs> well, Rick Flair from um, Deadly Sketch. Deadly sketch. That's right. Right, so now we've got our flash right here. It's going back pretty far, but not 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 past the tail. Um, I like for it to be. Now this stuff is kind of unruly. Uh, it kind of you know, whatever. So it's a bit. Mm -hmm. and, and right. Um, but I do want a little bit more taper to that, so I'm just going to kind of maybe cut a couple of these off. Um, there we go. Okay, so we got flash on top, flash on the bottom, and we're gonna put some fins on here. Now, uh, a lot of people use lots of different things. Hen feathers were really um, popular for a long time. You can switch out back to the middle or so. Oh, okay. Um, they're, they're popular for a long, they still are very popular. Um, I've, I've used them a little bit. I've always been like, dude, what? All these kind of fold into the fly, like this. This is probably more for the for the tire because they look cool, but um, they, uh, they they don't stick out the whole bunch like they 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 do. But once they get wet, they're so anyway. Jake uses rubber legs, and I think that is for function and it looks cool, but for function is pretty darn smart. So I've got this fancy brand called Orvis. These are silicone mini legs. I really like those. Only one, Gary, dude, I've got junk everywhere. You only see one errant fiber. Um, it, it's a good, good night. Um, and that's what I'm saying. If we're, we really haven't used that many materials, just some flash, some different colors of flash, bucktail and some feathers. Um, all right, so I've got two rubber legs. Kind of same thing I did on the, um, on the flash. I'm going to bring it over, cut it. I need four on each side. So I want to make sure they're the same length. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to, I'm going to cut shorter, cut shorter to where that's probably. I've tied so many of these. I can just do it by look. Just kidding. Another inch and a half. No, yep. Inch and a half. So there'll be, a, there'll be three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to take two, two of those fibers. I'll just go back to the hook. Please, man, what is this, Gary? It is totally unsad. All right. Take my little pinchy pinch, your B. Make sure that's just lined up. Okay. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to, I want that to be right in the front. 
I think the server should not see it. Get up there. Set it right at the front. And now I'm going to bring it back. Wrap over. Over. And I'm going to bring my thread back to the front. So that, that's one set of legs on one side. It's four pins on one side. They'll go together. That's, that's one. Look at the comments. Just we're just at errant feather. Just at errant. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing. Get my tips lined up. There's that errant feather. That's what we ought to, that should be our like fly company's name. Errant the, feather. The errant feather. Or you could invent a fly and call it the errant feather. Running an errant. And just like make the fly itself be just like an errant feather. Okay, so now you can see that that's um, and they're not perfect, but they're um, bring my thread right right to the front. So you can see we've got our our um, our legs, whatever you want to call them, our pins. Sorry. But here's the beauty of the errant see, feathers. See how they come out like that. That looks, that looks a little bit better. The beauty is is that when the fly is in the water, they go away. Yeah. Mental scissors in my mind. Okay, guys. Uh, let's get this day going. Nan, just imagine it Dang. wet. Think about it in the water. Uh, it trust me, whatever wherever it is, it when it gets wet, it will be perfect. It'll go up. Are you talking about this one? Is this the one, guys? Someone speak up. I don't want to cut them all off. You'd be like, you like I'll cut 50 of them off, and, and then you'll go, you still didn't get it. Is it this one? Oh, uh, they're just teasing is you. This one, which one is it? That one is a little wild. The one that curls back. Some people say, yeah, it's that one. Like, which one? I grabbed it. All right, we'll that one. Yeah, that one's a little unruly. This one off a little bit. So that, yep. that looks a little, I'll tell you what's driving me crazy is this one. Yeah, that's the one that, that that's like bass. a backwards one. Bass. That's there you go. Bass. <laughs> All right. So, show you what the fins look like on the front end. Front end, we see them on the side. So, four. Four legs come out on each side. Now, because there are four materials here, I'm going to take my little my resin. I'm going to, I don't need much. I'm drag what I've got on there now, drag around. And I'm not purposely getting any on the legs, but it will help them stick out or stick out and fold down as much. Joe's still stuck on the the rubber legs. He's like, huh. Joe's on the rubber. I figured he's still on the, the hollow fly, holler fly. He's just kind of like, hmm, I don't know about that. Okay. Okay. Got a little glob there because I messed up and got too much resin on the close to the eye of the hook. I did not want that. May as well throw this one away. Hey, Lucas. Okay. So we're good there. Good? Good, good? All right. So let me undo these. Oh, I can't because it's got that stuff on there. So now I'm going to do here. Here's, <laughs> tell me about it, Lucas. It is a big and um, so now I'm going to do four clumps of laser dub. Now this is the 2.0 bubbles or tiny wake. That's right, man. Bubbles. It's all about the bubbles and tiny wake. You're absolutely right. I'm saying that sarcastically, but you were. I'm being serious. You were right. <laughs> pushing water. Um, so the difference. <laughs> And this is one thing I learned, um, and I guess I've learned a lot of stuff from Jake, but this is something I've seen him do that I really haven't seen many other people do. So I'm going to stack this um, this laser dub, just like we did before. Stacking get, cards. Get it together, stacking cards, just right, get it all lined up. So we pull on it, see how it, we're not ripping it, but it goes. Now we'll take this. You guys ready for this? You guys ready? Mm-hmm. Bring this over. You might make sure that the butts are about the tips are about the same. Same, we'll cut this in half 50 50. Hmm. Oh my one god, the head, wouldn't it, Joe? <laughs> and don't start getting Joe over time. He's 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 all he's all good. Mono would look good on it though, Steve. 
I think I've got two spools of mono somewhere. I haven't used it in about three or four years. So it would be comedy hour if I pulled it out. I'm not I'm not pro level pro level status yet. All right. <clears throat> I'm totally being sarcastic. So I'm gonna put two the, the these two pieces, one on the side, one on this side. So I'm get this going straight up and down. We'll set this here. We'll pinch. Now this is the, this is like new um a 13 weight. No, dude, this thing's light. And I'll probably I'll probably throw this on a six to eight weight. <laughs> okay. So I'm holding the butts. I'm gonna tag this in. That's what I was afraid of. That darn resin got carried a little bit close, but it should be okay. Hopefully. If I didn't mess up the my, my beautiful fly. Now on the other side, the same thing. Like I said, this is this is different. A lot of those stuff we're doing we've seen before, but oh, this, this is new. Now you want to make sure you're not tying, you're not uh, getting rid of these little butts. It's definitely starting to look more like what it's supposed to look like. Put these are going on the side, real tight. Do a couple securing wraps. Now, what I'm doing right here is I'm building it this knuckle. That's what Jake calls it, the knuckle. Because um, that's going to help give the, the front of the fly a lot of body. I'm going to have it push water. I'm going to get one more stack of this all in. It doesn't need to be quite as thick as this, but we are going to double it. Let's do it thicker than that, though. <laughs> so I would give anything to have one of the trolls I used to have. I don't know what happened to him. I haven't had good luck in years. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not the only one on here that saved my G.I. Joe's. I remember about 15, 20, so about 20 or 25, 20 years ago, I pulled them out of the box and I was like, sweet. I was in my 20s. Pulled them out of the box and I'm like, sweet. A G.I. Joe's. I want to see what they look like because I pulled them out and all the rubber bands had popped. Oh, and no. Like and, they were, and they were just like a bunch of torsos, crotches, and legs, different piles. The, the rubber bands on the insides? Yep. They had just sort of like rotted. About, like crotches and torsos and, and uh, yeah, they used to make be held with rubber bands. They don't. They you can't have yeah. toys like that anymore. It's, it's choking hazard. Yeah. All right, so we got a little piece here. This one because I want this is gonna be on the top. I want this to be longer. Okay, so as opposed to cutting it in half like these, I'm gonna cut it about. Let's go to the side. Let's go to the tying desk. Okay? So I'm gonna cut this about. 60 40. Yeah, I like that. So you see, I've got it right here. Cut it. Kind of switch sides. There we go. Now, like I said, I don't want to catch my little knuckles. Right there. Right there. Now, if you do have more material on one, have it on. Okay, so back to the lights. Please. <clears throat> if you're going to have more material on these butts, it's better to have it on top because that's going to stay on the device, please. Because this piece right here is going to help it keel right. If you're going to have too little, the white piece of return is going to tie in is the one I would have too little on. And, you know, get them all perfect, you don't have to worry about it. but. I'm just saying, like, when you're trying to fix it to get it look just perfect, that's kind of what you're looking for is, um, oh, heck, never mind. John never going to tie us off like anything's being harassed. Dude, I, where have you been, Joe, the past, like, every time we've been on? It would not, if I, I have not broken my thread yet. So something is wrong tonight. I usually break my thread if we're live, and everyone usually gives me a hard time, and that's okay. Steve, we're just, you know, trying to figure out 
what watching you guys when I hear the, the typewriter, the typewriter. Good. When I hear Katie on the day gun typewriter back there, it makes it a little more uh entertaining because I know she's getting fired up. She's like, oh no, you didn't. <laughs> Okay, so I've got my same piece here. I'm going to tie this piece in. This is white, so sinews laser gun white. I'm going to tie this piece in the same way I tied the top piece in. So this one's going to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to take, and I think white is longer than all of anyway. So you can grab these. We'll brush out, but so we'll take this in about 60 40 or so. And, uh, That. Okay. Sure. I don't saw that at all. All right. So I'm gonna take my little my little clump, pinch it, stick it right there. Remember, we don't want to. That's too long, so we'll pull it a little shorter. We don't want to capture our quote knuckle. All right, so we got that in there, and this is one with all these little butt ends here, because this this stuff right here on the front, this is going to help be something else that creates that bulk that pushes the water. So I'm going to grab all this olive, trying to keep it somewhat spread out. We'll pull it, we'll thread up. All right, try to get my thread up. Pull this back, pull everything. Okay, I got a few wraps on there. Let's see, my, my head's not like super crowded, but it, it, it much more, it would be crowded. It would, I had it pretty good, but if you notice when I put that resin on the bucktail after I got reverse tied and put legs on there for fans at the front and everything want to pull the resin lock it in and the resin ran down right basically by the hook eye so that kind of filled in my spot that I was going to do all this in that one but we're getting the getting the gist of it here I want to do just now there you go you know what finish her out Out of the way. That's all. Okay, before we do much else, I'll try not to. Uh, you can see we've got clump here, clump on top, it's a little bit longer, clump here, and then the bottom white that's check out that, it's a little longer too. So we got four pretty separate clumps. So I'm going to take this, pull this back, and I'm just going to hit the um, the thread and have it bleed just a little bit into that laser top. But the rubber legs, they're supposed to be legs, right? Like they're no, just these, these are supposed to be fins. fins. Yeah, okay. And if you didn't have the, the resin, it would be okay. It will be okay. All right, so I'm going to make sure my eyes clear. Good. A little white. So if you didn't like the silhouette that it was doing right now, say like if it was too big, too small, it can grab it, kind of pull it back a little bit. And personally, I don't I don't want it to be super small. Um, we're going to bake it. And that, that will help help pull the silhouette back. We're about to jack it up completely, royally. Now we want to come to. Oh, to to we when we make it up there, we will totally make that trip. That'll be super fun. Big fish. I missed the last two where I saw big fish, Joe. Oh, they're just ragging you on the oh, novel right. kind of technique you're using. And um, I think it's pretty cool. All right, so we're going to pull the the, um, the four clumps, okay? Mm. So as you can see, we got one, two, three, four, four separate clumps there, right? 
So I want to be kind of gentle with it, kind of, but what I want to do is start kind of working these four clumps together. Now this is just a better way to do it this way than to um, try to get them bleeding in together going backwards, if that makes sense. We're going the correct way, we're just kind of going backwards now. So you see, I'm just kind of working them all together. And now do you all want to see something really cool? See something kind of cool? So we got that, see how the, the top is longer, the bottom is longer, and the side is shorter? That's what I want. You need to take your hair pick to it now. Well, I would, but here, here's what's kind of cool. This is a neat thing. Don't change the camera angle. So now what we're going to do is go like that, and we've got a lot of the shape we're looking for. Love it. It'll spit on it real good. So we'll get our, our comb pulled back just a little more so it's all bleeding together. Just like this. You can see the, the legs, aka fins. And you know, if, if, the, if the class starts getting crazy, just cut it off. Something you don't like. I don't want to be too aggressive with it, cutting it off though, because I'm afraid that if I, if I do, that um, then when it gets wet and gets straight, when we're missing it. So here is our here's our fly. Yeah, the way that you put on the um, laser is it laser dub yep. at the end actually was made it lay actually really well. Thank you. And you see the color that just regular grizzly with the olive behind it. See you, Joe. Bye, Joe. See you. Sorry, I, I missed your missed one of your comments. See you, Joe. Hey, Kim. Hey, Kim. Kim we're going to be down there uh, this week. Give us a shout. We are. Um, so, it's a nice story. So, this is it. Um, this is Jake Villwalk's Romer. Um, we hope you all enjoyed that. Was that? I don't know what time it is. Was that like super long? No. Um, so we really appreciate you guys hopping in. I'm like looking all over the place. That was a lot of fun. Um, I, I just this is just one of those flies. That, like get out of your comfort zone. Tie something that you don't you're not 100 comfortable with. Which I guess we get out of your comfort zone um, and give it a shot. And if the Reds are around this weekend, which Ken, I don't know if they are. Uh, I was hoping that the specs would be out, but I've heard that the um, the flounder or, or pretty much where it's at but the flounder there, flounding if there's something that will eat bait fish in the top water or middle column then this thing should work nicely um but this one is going to go in the box for our for our ongoing giveaway where we hit 600 followers so make sure you tag hashtag wet finish wednesday if you uh tie up something like this uh jake bill walks rover um comment on the video and we uh we really appreciate it we're going to be having a neat little release of a video tomorrow i believe can you use that fly on anything fresh what absolutely yeah on everything i believe uh jake typically ties it from a size two on the tp605 or 610 um so a lot bigger i think he, he ties these in uh, musky flavor so like like this big something like that um but uh but absolutely uh this is man you might not have been on earlier but let me show it again small mouth flies small mouth bass flies by jake billwalk this is his book this has got name of this probably right up your alley you gonna shoot him a note um but um but he's a very talented tires he's a guide um up north up man's way and um that's where this pattern is you can also find it fly fisher magazine uh, he's, he's tying it there. We tied the 2.0 version, the Rover 2.0. And um, that's about it. So, guys, thank you so much for hopping on. Am I missing something, Katie? No, not unless you just wanted to, like, talk about um, our giveaway. Uh, okay. So, like I was saying, Katie will go over the things that you get. But uh, you have to say Whip Finish Wednesday. On your variation of this fly, it doesn't matter if you got all the right materials or not. Just make an attempt 
posted. Katie will share it on YouTube next week. Actually, we're not going to be here next week because we're going to be in South Carolina, but maybe we'll try and do it with our phones or something. Um, next, uh, um, also comment on the video. If, you, if you're watching still and you haven't liked or subscribed the video, so subscribe to the channel. We'd love it. Steve's right, 583. We'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel. The video. You can see that tomorrow we uh, we post a video that Katie is on. She's done with it. It's going up tomorrow. Katie's on it. I was forced. So she was forced. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, the Hungarian partridge that I think Katie showed is in the giveaway from Swedish Flybox. Twenty-five dollar gift card for Gary Barnes flies for Gary Barnes. Um, Flies full of flies, including the one we just tied. Uh, what else? Steve's gonna go play with some trolls. Angler's coffee. Oh, and two bags of Angler's coffee and a really sweet coffee cup. And any of these people that we've been talking about, like Angler's coffee, Smitty's fly box, Umqua, Gary. I, I think Gary can probably hear it really well, but we'd really appreciate it if you would send them a note on Instagram and say, hey guys, thanks for the giveaway stuff for fly for her. Um, uh, we finished Wednesday. We really appreciate it. Um, just your guys' support that, that gets us cool stuff to give away. All right. If there's no other questions, hey, Mark. Just want to jump in and say, hey, we'll be in the South Carolina coast, Mark. Guys, thank you so much. I'm going to turn over to Katie let her say goodbye. We love hanging out with you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye. See you later.